Okay. Hola, mi gente. Welcome to the Corazon Chronicles. We are back. I'm your host, Ray. And I'm Janice. And today we have a kind of interesting topic to talk about. Oh, what are we talking about? Well, <laughs> we're going to talk about if you're worthy of love or not. Oh, damn. I know. It could be a could be a, a touchy subject. I think also um, we have a little subject off of the Reddit thread because that was such a smash from the last time that we did that. And uh, so we'll get in that as well. And do we, we have an Instagram any? DM. Yeah, we got a DM. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Um, I, I put a list together of some topics and stuff that I wanted us to talk about in the future. And for some reason, this one came to mind um, while I was listening to a podcast. And it had me really questioning if people believe if they're worthy of love or not and if they don't do they unknowingly kind of exile themselves from the opportunity you know i wonder if it's like a color that people wear um you know when you have someone who's like a coworker who's positive you much rather work with that person versus the other person who might be a little negative or um you know not as pleasant to be around so i just wonder if you know like being depressed or something, you wear that color. I wonder if people who feel like they're not deserving of love or think they'll never find it or if they're not worthy, I wonder if it's something that you can see on somebody. Yeah, I definitely think you can. I think the way that you carry yourself out in the world, you can tell when people are kind of open or closed off, right? You can tell when people are just completely turned off to the idea of even like attracting someone or or whatnot because i've seen those people i know some of those people that are just so shut off to the idea partially i think because they're still dealing with shit from the past whether Uh it's like you know toxic relationship or whatever but i think a lot of it also has to do with like self-worth do you think that like well i guess the people that you know are they taking like action to kind of like prevent people from liking them or wanting to talk to them like yeah actively staying out of the dating scene whether that's like not downloading dating apps they like make themselves look ugly I don't know anybody who's like actively like okay, doing yeah. that shit, but I definitely know people who are like, I'm not even going to put myself in situations where like I can meet somebody, you know, Damn. I'm just not going to put myself out there because I think a lot of it has to do with just fear of either opening up some shit that you think is healed, but you're afraid hmm. that, you know, something's going to happen to reopen that, that wound. Right. Or you just haven't, I don't know. You just, haven't processed shit that's happened to a place where like you can comfortably move on. And so then they self, they self sabotage. That's pretty much what it sounds like. Yeah. Like I know, you know, a couple people who just have like track records of shitty relationships. And I think every time you go through something like that, it makes your tolerance less and less. Uh And so I think some people honestly get to the place where they're like, no amount of, I'm not willing to sacrifice any amount of peace or serenity or just un- uncomfortability. I just don't want to be uncomfortable in any type of way. And so I'm just not even going to allow somebody into my fucking space. Mm. Even though they're probably still going through the shit of like, I'm lonely and blah, blah, blah. But it's almost like the fear of letting go of that control that they have over their environment yeah. is greater than the fear of being alone. Yeah, it sucks too because it's like it's almost like they they uh they just don't realize the possibility of it actually working out and you know I think that that scares them too. You know, I think that sometimes people can be very scared of the thought of love just because of the fact that it's one of the most vulnerable things that we can do, yeah. right? So to let somebody in and also let your guard down for yourself and like to feel those feelings of love that that you have for somebody can be a very powerful thing. Cause I know that there's certain le- levels of love and types of love that I've only felt from certain people, you know, like I like love from my father to me, right. That's only a love that we're going to have together. And then I've, I've seen how I can open up and love other people as well too. some of my friends, you, um, my relationship with my mom now, like these different forms of love that I didn't really know existed within me. And it's, that's awesome to be able to have that. So I just wonder if, uh, that I would assume that probably scares some people from time to time. Yeah, vulnerability is one of those things that it really, you know, requires you to open yourself up to a lot of intense emotions. That could be disappointment, betrayal, you know, sadness, anger, all those things. And 
a lot of people are just so incapable of feeling in negative emotions that mm. they just would rather avoid situations that could potentially bring those things out. And relationships are one of the areas of our lives that like that is where you're going to discover your triggers, your traumas, what turns you on, what turns you off. Right. And some people just can't even deal with those negative emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. You know, and uh, it is a sad thing. And, you know, um, one of my friends right now is telling you about um, his ex cheated on him. And then now he's, you know, they're, they're back into the, the DMs with each other. Um, they're having conversation. They even met up. And the, 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 when they met up, they just met up to have a conversation. But the, the conversation was all about how she's involved with this new man. And um, the one thing he said to me was that it turns him on so much. Like, for some reason, it's so hot for him, that, for her to be cheating on this new man with her. And, I, you know, they haven't had sex or anything yet. But it's obviously on track to do something like that. So I, I, I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that because he, his whole problem with women and his toxicity right now is all rooted, all rooted out of this one experience, experience he had with this lady. Yeah. And, um, you know, for some reason he, he unblocks her and he sees that she's with somebody. So they end up talking and meeting up and, um, you know, he swears up and down, he's not going to get back with her. So, but he's also okay with her, you know, possibly getting ready to move in with this new guy and stuff like that. So I just was, I don't know how that ends up well at all, because I mean, I feel like that's just a toxic stew. Yeah. That, that's not going to end well for anybody. I think honestly, he's coming from a place that she hurt him and now he has found a way in to potentially have her feel the same pain or have the guy that she's with feel the same pain that he felt. So I think it's coming from a vindictive place for me. I don't think that this guy is the guy that she cheated on him with, though. But it doesn't matter. Oh, he's still going to get it. I think he just wants to ruin her shit Damn. the way that she ruined his shit. So he's hoping that. He's hoping to cause them to break up yeah. or is he causing, is he hoping to get her to fall back in love with him? And then he's just going to do the old rug pull and be like, ah, sorry. I think it might be both. Honestly, I uh, think he wants her whole situation to fall apart. Yeah. And then for him to be like the final nail in the coffin, like, like bitch, you. I didn't want you anyway. Right. And this is what you get. Yeah. I think that's right too, because even when I was talking to him and stuff like that, he didn't seem like he was like rekindling a love. Why would you? She, she cheated like, on him. It's yeah. so like, bro, you already know she's cheating on her new man with you. Right. She cheated on you with somebody else. You already know what to expect. Yeah, in some sick, twisted way, he was like turned on by that. I was like, bro, that's super, super cringy too, because it's like you know she's she's obviously having sex with this dude, and like you're gonna have sex with her too. I'm like. I just don't know. It's kind of like a cuck move for me. I don't That's know. Karma. <laughs> that, kind of he's inviting like terrible fucking karma <laughs> yeah, into yeah. his life. I'm sorry, but when you operate from a place of just like you have zero consideration for other people's feelings based on your own actions, like that shit's kind of sociopathic to me, honestly. Well, yeah, this is let's not forget. This is the guy that that was texting me the other day. Um, uh, randomly, obviously, I think it was late at night when he had been drinking and stuff like that. But he was just like. You know, I, I think that I've come to the realization that I don't really care about how women feel towards me. Like, I just want to, like, oh my God. I just want to, like, have sex or I, I'm not quite sure what he was getting to. I, I don't have my I don't have it pulled up in front of me. I guess I can share it on the next episode or shit. Maybe I'll even have him on the podcast so oh he God. can explain his toxic <laughs> ass self. But anyways, um, he, he was just, you know, basically saying he doesn't really have patience with women anymore and stuff like that. And it's a wild thing because, you know, he's not the worst looking guy in the world. And and he seems to have multiple conversations going on with multiple women all the time. He's always going out and stuff like that. So I just don't know why women are the problem. I think that maybe it's just because there's one woman who's the problem. Yeah, he's taking out his anger, frustration, betrayal, whatever he feels towards his ex that cheated on other women. He's basically put a blanket statement across like women ain't shit. And, you know, I think that just speaks to his level of insecurity about opening back up because he's so upset about it that he can't even wrap his head around being vulnerable enough right. to let somebody in for a real reason. He just wants to go out there and use people the way that he probably feels he was used because yeah. somehow that equalizes things in his head. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I, I guess to bring it all back around, he 
is a prime example of someone who feels unworthy of love. Yeah. Even though he puts himself on this high value male pedestal and he everything like it. that. But to him and himself, the fact that just the way he self sabotages, um, kind of the way that he takes care of himself and stuff like that, it just goes to show that he doesn't feel like he's worthy of love. And it also seems like he hasn't really quite gotten to the point where he's loving himself yet either. You can't love anybody else if you don't love yourself. Right. You know? It's a complete reflection of how you treat yourself of what you allow in your life. And he's just allowing fuck shit right. because honestly, he's probably got a lot of insecurities that he hasn't processed from the relationship. Um, I wanted to check in with you because um, your friend that we've brought up and used her situation a few times. She's a, you guys don't understand, but she's actually the third host of this show. She just doesn't know. <laughs> it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But I just wanted to check in and I wanted to get an update on your girl and see how it was going with the guy and, and that whole sin scenario. And yeah, so you give him a little recap. If I you think want. last time we talked about it, she had given him an ultimatum because basically last time that they were together, um, some shit went down that made her very suspicious about like whether or not he's being faithful and his intentions and all that stuff. And he was very wishy-washy about explaining things. He really didn't feel like the need to reassure her in the way that she needed. And so she basically left him with an ultimatum. It's like, we're either going to talk about this in person. You're going to come and see me. We're going to figure this shit out. I'm going to, I want to look you in the eye and see if you were actually telling me the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you are not willing to make that amount of effort, like I'm done. And it looks like, you know, he just absence makes the heart grow fonder was not the case here Damn. because once they were in their separate locations, because they don't live in the same area, um, he just, I guess, decided it wasn't worth it. And so what happened? What happened? Uh, she, she extended the, 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 the bridge and all of a sudden he just never came or yeah. did he ghost or like is he still trying to talk to her or? i i don't i have to find out those details if they're still in communication but from what i've seen it's just like she's come to the realization that like he wasn't who she thought she was he was and maybe she was projecting a fantasy onto him that he was never capable of actually like fulfilling right okay because this is what happens when us women we get into our mid-30s and we don't have all the shit lined up like society says we were supposed to right you're still waiting for the partner you're still waiting for who's gonna be the father of my kids um i think there was a lot of projection going on as far as like what she wanted versus what he could actually give her so i i don't think that he's 100 percent to blame you know i do honestly think that she was expecting more than he could give mm -hmm. and maybe he just wasn't the best at expressing that limitation Damn. or maybe she just wasn't receptive to believe in that right yeah it makes me wonder too um you know it also makes me wonder how it would be if they were close together i i wonder if if he would be more comfortable in letting his guard down and like opening up to be with her or if if there would be more lies and deceit like more games being played to you know because i don't really know what was going on but it just seemed like there was a, a little bit of a little bit of shenanigans with the whole thing so i just wonder if he would have if them being close together would have brought out more of that you know more of that dark side or if it would have gone the other way and he would have been like you know what i think i can actually do this because i am seeing this girl every day well, you know. I know that she said when they first met, he basically talked about like it's bad timing for, oh. because he was just focused on other shit. He's trying to focus on getting his money up, you know, figuring out his life, getting more stable, blah, blah. And I don't think she wanted to accept that as an answer. Mm. I think she tried to convince him like, hey, that's not a reason for us not to pursue things, you know, and I, he's the type of dude that he's not really going to be able to stand up to a woman of her intensity. Yeah, she's a strong woman. She doesn't take sure. no for an answer type thing. And yeah. I think he just got to the point where, well, there's nothing I can do to convince her that this is just not the right time. So the best way to go about it is to kind of just pull this bullshit of just like giving her a reason to, to yeah. Get, yeah, I guess causing was, a scenario that makes her be like, well, fuck this. Yeah, he uh, he doesn't seem very alpha as far as like being out, being able to to say what he believes in or mm -hmm. speak up with what he thinks could be a good idea. Someone like her needs someone like that, and then also um, based on that fact too, that's also why he waited for it to break down to the point where she was the one who pulled the plug because without him being able to speak up for himself, he obviously wasn't quote unquote man enough 
to pull the pull the trigger and be like, I mean, pull the plug, pull the trigger is a horrible term. Pull the plug on it and be like, hey, listen, I'm just not feeling you. I've got other shit going on. And, yeah. and that's a very hard conversation to have as a man or a woman, really. Breaking up with somebody is not easy. You know, it's, it's really, it really, it really sucks, especially when you know the other person's like head over heels for you and stuff. It's very tough to be like, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. So, well, I, but the thing for me is like, even as hard as that is, like, is it harder than having a whole ass second life? Like in my instance with my ex, I'm like, I would have much rather you just come and told me, look, I'm not in love with you anymore. No, I, think, I don't want to be with you no more. I don't want to be married no more versus like finding out you're having a fucking three year affair with some bitch. Well, I think, I think in that situation too, you know, obviously I'm, I don't know anything really about it, but just hearing situations like that, when I hear people have like, been out here running around, but also keeping their home fort all together and stuff. It's like, I feel like there's other things at play too. Maybe it was a monetary thing. Maybe he needed, oh, a place, I know for me, he needed a place for to him stay it was definitely shit. monetary because he, I know he couldn't like survive financially by himself. So he's just going to keep the whole shit going. Which it's like wild. running, it's like a Ponzi scheme, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, the shit's going to come out one day at some point, but fuck it. Let's have a good time while we're here. That's incredible that like people stay together for finances. And I think this is a great, Segue. We, we have talked about this. Into too. a DM that we received about love and money. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's mm-hmm. go. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. So um, I do have a, another podcast called Yo Quiero Dinero where I talk Shouts about out. money. We can check that out wherever you're listening to this Yo podcast. Yo Quiero Dinero. And so, you know, I have quite a number of followers who've come on over to this new uh, project that we're working on. And uh, so we got a money question. Let's go. So this is from Lucia Diaz. And she asked, how do you talk to your partner about investing? I'm investing, but he feels scared. And I think that's super real, right? When you have two different people coming together who have completely different money philosophies, completely different upbringings, Mm -hmm. experiences with money, money traumas, all that shit. It's a lot to come into a household and start sharing finances and creating financial goals together and all that shit. And I think for me, what I found to be most successful, not just with like romantic relationships, but even like, let's say you want your parents to get better with money or your sibling or just anybody that you care about. I think leading by example is the way to go, right? So before you start telling your partner, hey, you should invest because it's a good idea. You want to retire, blah, blah. I think you want to make sure you're doing the thing that you're telling them to do. That way you can like show them, like show them what your account looks like. Like, hey, I put That's two it. grand in this thing and it's given me this. And look, now it's at 2284 and yeah. we're going to keep it going. You know? That's exactly what I did with my parents actually, because my parents were very skeptical about investing for a long time. And so one day I sat my dad down and I literally took him through my portfolio and I showed him like how it's grown over the past 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, what? Hey. Like this for real? Mm. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, he's like texting me, hey, I want to open up a Roth IRA. Good. Help me do this. How do I do this? What do I invest in? And I'm like, hell fucking yeah, because it's one thing for me to be like, yeah, investing's great. It's another thing for him to actually see like, oh, shit, this is actually working and it's working for somebody that I know. Right. Not just some hearsay or some dude on a fucking YouTube channel is like, hey, you should invest in crypto. Right. 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 <laughs> We're not giving shitty advice to the people that we care about. We're actually like living what we say. Yeah, that's true. Because I actually, my dad came to visit, you know, we just had lunch the other day. And he was talking to me about, um, you know, how, how, how they're setting certain things up and stuff like that. You know, my, his dad, my grandfather is getting ready to, to go to a home. And, and he was just talking about, you know, the social security and, you know, just how everything's working out with that. And then he just like made a promise to me and, and my sister. He was like, look, you guys will never have to worry about putting us in a home or you don't ever have to worry about us coming to live with you because, you know, we're retired and we only get, you know, 1100 bucks a month in social security. So he had all, yeah, he's got all his stuff figured out. And then he also said that for my sister and I, he also set up a Roth for us as well too. So, and then he invited me to kick in anytime, you know, he's like, if you, you know, even if it's 20 bucks a month or 20 bucks a paycheck, whatever, he's like, just let me know. I mean, we can set up a thing and just start putting that shit in there. Um, you know, and I'm 31 now, so it's, um, you got about 30 something years to retirement, babe. Oof, I'm, I, I feel like I'm going to be one of those old Latino guys that like, I'm going to have to keep doing something until <laughs> like, cause I know that as soon as I stop, I'm, I know just how my body is and stuff. Like if I don't have anything to get up and go do, or if I don't have like a purpose, I'm just going to rot away on the yeah. couch. <laughs> we all need a purpose. And I think that's one of those things that people don't think about. Um, kind of what retirement looks like until they're there, usually. 
And that's why I'm a big fan of the like financial independence, retire early movement, because it really encourages you to start thinking about like, what does that life look like now, you know, in your 30s? What could you do uh, to practice Mm semi-retirement? Like, you know, maybe you can't retire right now because you don't have, you know, X million dollars in in your portfolio. But like, what if you invested enough to supplement, I don't know, 20% of your income, 30% of your income, and then you could like work a less stressful job because you don't need to get paid as much. Or, you know, what if you buy a piece of real estate that's giving you a couple thousand dollars a month and then you don't have to work as many hours because that's supplementing things. So how, how do um so with 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 what the uh, with, with that question there, um, I come from a different background of money, um, different than you and, and different than anybody. Everybody's got their own little story. You know, I grew up broke. You grew up broke. We were very similar. Yeah, I didn't that. learn shit about investing from my parents. Right. So imagine if being you know in a relationship with somebody who's not super educated on money like for me i'm not the most educated on it just because i haven't had to be it's never been a necessity for me or my family until now you know with my dad doing what he's doing but like it's just never been a thing to like worry about investing when i'm going paycheck to paycheck or i'm you know worried about investing my, my money in a business or something so i i wondered how do couples approach money? Because money can be a very, very touchy subject. You know, I, I know that like combining, combining incomes and having joint bank bank accounts and all that stuff. People are are there's two sides of the track on that, and and, and that I think you touch on all that with your your yo quiero dinero, right? They can find all that type of stuff over there. Yeah, but, and I'm actually writing about that in my book that's coming out next year too. Right, right, which is which is going to be huge. So, ha- what would what would you say? We haven't really had too much of a money talk yet, personally, other than like, I mean, we kind of have just because we yeah. both have that mentality. But what would you say for someone who's afraid to talk to their partner about what they're doing with money or if they don't really know how to educate? You know, yeah. I think that that's really what it comes down to. Anytime someone's scared about something, it's just because they're uneducated because they don't yeah. know about it. So that's true. I think. You know, there's definitely a time and a place to have conversations about money with your partner. Like, I don't necessarily think that's something you need to be talking about on the first couple dates, right? Sure. Maybe you find out about their career and you can make an estimate about, like, what their salary is based on what they do for work Mm -hmm. or what kind of car they drive or where they live or whatever. But I think the time to have those conversations is really, like, when you're considering moving in together. No, but about about investing in general. Oh, about inv- she, like, was, she was talking about investing. Yeah. So well, I think, you know, obviously she's already investing. So the first thing is to kind of be transparent with what you're doing with your partner. I mm. think it's important to just show him like what you Yeah, because he doing. has no idea about this whole world, right? Yeah. He's like investing. Shit, I don't even know what that, I don't even know what Roth IRA means. That yeah. just sounds like a tax form. Yeah. And I think it's also probably a good idea for her to talk about how she learned about it, mm. whether it's she's been listening to a podcast or what books. Has Make she it read. more relatable that way. Yeah. And I think it's also important to have each person kind of reflect on what the purpose of this investing is, mm. you know, because it's like it's great to tell everybody, yeah, you should invest. But like, why? Right. What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to retire at 65? Do you want to retire at 45? Maybe they're investing to buy a house. Do you want to retire at all? Right. Do you want to invest to accelerate your down payment, you know, um, for for a house? Do you want to live off of this income and move to another country? Right, right, right. So I think when you start getting in that goal setting as a couple, I think that's hella romantic Mm. because it really does indicate like i'm planning for the future like solidifies and part of it, solidifies right? your commitment yeah i think that's that's very sexy and i think that if you can talk about money as a couple you can talk about a lot of other awkward hard shit mm-hmm. so maybe money's the entry point to just being able to have deeper more vulnerable conversations that are going to help you navigate all types of other things in in relationships because i know there's people that are more comfortable having talks about sex and they are about money yeah money's 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 a funny thing because it's something that's needed it's yeah. like a, it's like the it it, I, it takes you to be in a relationship it takes me in the relationship and then obviously we need money for the whole thing to fucking work yeah. right so it's a third party in pretty much anything that you do as a couple yeah. no matter what you do no matter where you go no matter what you try to do where you live if you're gonna have kids what cars you drive oh. what all of it's affected by that so so i think that like with 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 her question when when she said that he's like a little spooked about it or something like that, um, I think it would be 
I think it'd be useful to it'd be helpful to just kind of figure out why he feels spooked about it. Yeah. I think that it's probably the the fear of the unknown. I think it's the fear of the unknown because that's what it is for me. Just yeah. because I don't know much about it, but it and it also is one of those things like a uh, you know person learning about Bitcoin or whatever. You know, they're just like it's just so much to take in. You know, it's kind of easy to just let it go and be like, ah, I don't really care about that. You know, I'm not really worried about that because it mm-hmm. does take, it's not like you're just going to listen to someone for five minutes and you're just going to know how this shit works no. and know what you want to do. So I think that, yeah, get to the root of why he's uncomfortable about it and then also share with him why you want to do it. Like you said, you know, you need a, you know, it, it's nice for you know him to understand why you're trying to do it and what you're trying to get out of it. And, and who knows that, like she said, that might, that might unlock a whole nother realm between you guys and your relationship. Um, I think it's important to start small too, because a lot of people have this perception that in order to start investing, you need to have thousands of dollars just like sitting in a bank account. Yeah. And now with you know all these apps that are, exist, whether that's like Betterment or Wealthfront or Robinhood or whatever, like you can start with five dollars, mm-hmm. right? So it's okay if you want to put five dollars on the stock market and like let's see what it does. Versus like starting with five thousand dollars, right, I mean? right, right. So I think it's almost like you have to give yourself repeat exposure to the thing that scares you in order to make it less scary. Yeah, and and I I would recommend taking that approach of start just start small. And I would also um, with the starting small thing um, as a couple and stuff like that. I know we haven't gotten there, but we've actually talked about this. You brought it up uh, uh, the other day. Um, You're like we should do a joined bank account but joined savings account that way we can save up for trips uh, you know i was talking about you know my house is really close to downtown and it'd be really nice you know i always talk about it'd be nice to have like a couple of electric bikes so we could like just ride downtown and go get something to eat have a drink and you're like yeah we, we can have a, a conjoined savings account for something like that and that right there believe it or not guys is a small way of investing it kind of proves the model to yourself to your partner that you're able to set aside this certain amount of money that you guys, you know, make a promise that, Hey, you know, 50 bucks at each paycheck is just going to go straight into the account. It is what it is. And eventually in six months we've got, you know, three, $4,000 and bada bing, bada boom, we get to like plan a trip and start doing all that. So yeah. um, hopefully that answers her question. I, I think that, you know, we kind of nailed it a little bit on both sides. Yep. Good luck to you, Sandra. I hope that you get it figured out and that, you know, just lead by example and be patient too with your your partner because you just never know, like, you got to find out their money story and why they feel the way that they do. And having compassion for each other, I think, is always a good approach to take in any relationship about any topic that you don't necessarily agree on. Hell yeah, I agree. Now, I have one more update that I would like to get from you. Okay. And that is the update on the Rao and Rosalia situation because oh i'm God. not really plugged into it i think i remember you saying something to me about it the other day but i think i was either going to work or coming from work it, it kind of glossed over but let's 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 get the juice or the tea on that because that was uh something we were all kind of holding on to so yeah so when we talked about the initial breakup a couple of weeks ago and if you, if you hadn't heard that episode i believe it's episode four so go and check that out um it was like the day of so it was breaking news there was no details about why they broke up hell yeah but a lot of things have come out Uh-oh. since then. And some of them have already been uh, debunked. Dis- yes, debunked. And then some of them have not been confirmed nor denied. But apparently, you know, the first thing obviously that came out was like some cheating rumors. There was um. some Colombian chick who was allegedly like associated with Rao. Oh, so Rao was being suspected of being the one that cheated. Yeah, there were some like internet blogs that came about. And you weren't feeling that. No, it just felt very like this shit feels like a stretch. Because he was all about her shit. Yeah. And so I think it was like 48 hours after those rumors started to swirl. He actually went on his Instagram and did like a public statement that was basically like, look, I'm many things, but I am not a cheater. I am not that person. Um, People break up for thousands of different reasons, and we know what happened with our relationship. Uh, um, Because she hadn't put out a statement yet. Yes, and he basically said, like, why would I – I'm not going to stay silent when people are trying to ruin the best love story that I've had a chance to experience, Uh right? uh So he was, like, hella respectful, like, towards the relationship. He obviously still has a lot of love for her. Yeah. And Rosalia, I believe the following day – also issued a statement on her Instagram, basically confirming what Ralph said. 
that mm. like this is not why so we she had up. his back then you yeah. know because she could have like did some type of subliminal and let everybody speculate and yeah. you know yes so from what i've read or seen on the tiktoks because you know tiktok is where all the breaking news happens now uh-huh. there is an alternative reason for the breakup which i believe is actually the case and i i think i mentioned this when we were talking about it initially i feel like their careers were conflicting in some way shape Ooh, or form right because we were talking about industry plan yes, right right yes. right and so it came out basically that rosalia's team did not think that rao was good for her from a pr perspective like a brand that he was too quote unquote like ghetto ratchet hood and it was bringing down the value of her brand uh because, you know, she's this iconic musical genius that went to school and studied music and this is her destiny and da-da-da. Whereas Rao is very much like a homegrown, self-taught artist, you know, that has had a completely different path to success. Um, Rosalia knew she wanted to do this shit forever. So she's been like training for this as a little girl. She went to music school, did the whole thing. Right. Like the she's super traditional on that route. Rihanna, Beyonce path. Yeah. Whereas Rao, this was like his, you know, third career attempt after like trying to be a soccer player and then trying to be like a... a I want to say he was a producer no but even before that he he's done a couple different things okay to find his path figuring to out what he's becoming trying to an do. artist yeah he didn't he was, go to school just, for it he just knew he wanted to get to the bag mm-hmm. he was like i want yeah. to do something that i'm gonna make a couple million bucks yeah yeah hell and, yeah and I he was it. actually he wanted to be a soccer player initially but then he got hurt and that career kind of ended mm-hmm. so um basically they you know, the rumor is that her team was like, bro, you need to end this shit because it's just not good for your brand. We want you to be out here on the level of like the Kardashians, like being on TV and being you, you think that's like famous. Do like you think that's a team thing or a label thing? Because that feels like puppeteer-esque to be like, hey, I know it, that you're in love with this little boy right now, but we need to focus on getting some money. And yeah. you can, if you love him, you, you guys can get back to him after I'm done with you. You know, the whole label, suck him dry. I mean, from a or music like as your perspective, team, you know, sorry to cut you off again, no, it's fine. but as your team, like for me, team would mean like, you know, people I trust to have around me. If they know they've seen us take trips together, they know how much we love each other, the music videos, everything else. Then why would someone speak up and be like, put that, put that in my ear of like, maybe this isn't good at this time. You know? I want to say it's PR people like okay. image consultants because Rosalia, honestly, like Before she got with Rao, she was a very polarizing figure in the Latin music space because she's from Spain. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were calling her basically a colonizer for making reggaeton and like urban Uh, Latin music because uh. that's not the music of their culture, right? Their their music is flamenco and like all that European Spanish music. And a lot of people were like, oh, look at her cute ass coming up in here, like colonizing the shit out of her music, becoming one of the biggest stars, like winning Grammys for this type of music winning lots of awards it almost felt like they were calling her a colonizer yeah she right? came like in a, yeah. She culture culturally vulture. appropriation yeah right and so i feel like the relationship with rao did a lot to legitimize her mm. because now she's part of the culture now yeah, she's like, like repping Latino, the culture from yeah. a different lens right and creating music with somebody who's like from fucking puerto rico the yeah. heart the home of reggaeton yeah um, so maybe I don't want to think this about her. That was a move. I'm not going to lie. It's but a power maybe move. that was like a part of her kind of legitimizing herself in the industry. And her people were like, all right, well, you're cemented. You don't need this fucking guy no more. Like, let's. And she did the song with Bad Bunny too, which was fire. She's done songs with like every major artist at this point. Damn. And so it's just like. I believe that to be the reason for the breakup way more than I do like some weird infidelity shit. No, I, what would you do if, you know, cause they are going to be spotted out with new people and stuff like yeah. that. What if she ends up at club live <laughs> with Miami vice lifestyle, Raciel and on hell. And she's walking backstage with Mike Bowers. I really think she needs like, to she's not might, be she messy. Might, she might jump around. It, no, could, it she... could go. It could go. Cause Rihanna did her fair share of jumping around. You know, they all do their little thing where... I don't know. I feel like it's like dating the same... Like, dating within the same basketball team or something. Yeah, hell yeah. It's not cute, I like, know. to be up rotate in rotation with different reggaeton artists. Facts. Like, go pick another fucking genre. Carol G didn't really do that, right? Or did she? Well... Is she? 
Carol G now is allegedly dating Fade, which is he's a Colombian reggaeton artist. So okay, there you go. He's from a completely different like side of the genre versus like dating another Puerto Rican. Like on well, besides on well, yeah. So <laughs> you're so grossed out by. She him. went back to her culture because she is Colombian, right? Oh, okay. So she's like, I'm gonna go back to the homeland to find my next man. I'm not yeah. gonna go be dabbling out here in these international waters. <laughs> Day, yeah. On on uh, on well is a he's a character. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's all wrapped up in drama with Takashi. Yeah. Because now Takashi is allegedly like fucking around with Anwell's baby mom. I did see some posts. And I saw about something that, yeah. the other day that like, you know, Takashi is rumored to just be like a terrible baby daddy who doesn't even tell Yeah, yeah, it's kids. true. Yeah, it's but true. But he yeah. apparently had like Yailin, that's her name, um, her his child. Like Anwell and her child, like in his lap. Ooh. And he was like putting pictures of that shit on Instagram. So he's like, you know Oh, trolling. Yeah, yeah being he's the baby ma- dad. he's the master troll. Yeah. So, you know, this wow. this is what happens when you're just a messy individual that likes drama. You attract it. And, you know, the whole 6 9 thing, too, is, is crazy because, um, you know, I've seen some interviews and stuff with him where he's like, you know, all this shit's orchestrated, you yeah. know, like regardless of what's going on and how like how you people hate me and shit. He's like, there's shit that's happening behind closed doors and shit that's so orchestrated. That's like all these fake beefs and stuff that's just making up where it's making both of us tens of millions of dollars selling records, disc records, like, you know, the he's post. He's been a clickbait artist since it, day one. He's literally literally named himself the the troll king yeah he, he knows how to troll on the internet that's how he trolled himself into his career yeah isn't that amazing like you know, it's crazy i mean to each their own i you mean amazing as far as like those decisions it's just amazing what he's done i mean it is what it is as far as like yeah he's he's definitely uh sold his soul right yeah yeah all it's... right baby so let's see what you got on this reddit thread because man we were reading a couple of them and i'm folks i'm telling you these reddit threads are so juicy i swear i can do a whole we could do like a whole segment on just reddit thread reactions and just like ray's ranting and janice ranting about these these reddit it's like i'll just call it reddit rants how about that yeah honestly for me i'm just it's wild Amazing. to me how open and transparent and honest people are on the internet well because you know they're doing it from behind a keyboard right <laughs> well, it's like the haters names, it's so. like the haters that like to say shit right yeah okay, yeah let's go let's hear it okay so this is again from the am i the asshole thread on reddit and if you haven't just literally type in a i t a reddit thread and wow you're gonna go down a rabbit hole let's go okay so this one is called am i the asshole for losing interaction Ooh. okay let's let's go. i think everybody's been here at some point yeah I'm a 24-year-old male, and I live with my 24-year-old girlfriend, who is a wonderful woman who supports me and cares for me no matter what. We have been together over five months, and I've, we've even moved to Florida together. We're starting hey. new jobs and renting for now, and we have our own goals and shared goals as a couple. Nice. Now, the issue is that I'm not the shallow type of person to judge a person on physical stature alone. And from past experiences, I've learned that someone who loves and cares for you is more important than anything else. Okay. That's why when I met her, I knew instantly I wanted to start a real relationship and we both felt the same way, hence the move to Florida, etc. However, lately something has been bothering me during sex over the last couple of weeks. Oh, no. Now, my girlfriend is overweight, but I never really cared because she goes to the gym with me and watches her intake like me. Yet I can't help but lose my erection earlier than I ever do at any time in my life during sex. Damn. I keep thinking about it, but I think I'm turned off over her weight, and it's bothering me a lot. Oh. Like, I'm not that simple-minded, but my body is acting otherwise, and I feel like I'm about to ruin the best relationship I've ever had over something so stupid, and I don't know if that's an asshole move from my end. Wow. I've thought about this for weeks, and I honestly don't know what to do. Am I the asshole? You, sir, are definitely an asshole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But this actually is a, a great, a great uh, chance for me to plug our new uh, sponsor for the show, Blue Chew. If you're experiencing any type of erectile dysfunction, take a Blue Chew, and uh, that will solve it. Even if you are turned off by your girlfriend because she, quote unquote, gained some weight. Hey, he's full of shit. Yeah. I am just so full of shit. Hey, hey, you never know. We got to manifest these things. So anyways, man, that's a very tough situation. It's kind of sad, right? It makes me want to be like, um, how do you say it? Oh, porosito. Yeah. Oh, porosito. <laughs> Ay, bendito. But anyways, um, it, it's, it's, that's a sad thing because, you know, he, he seems like he found a really good girl, um, you know, a good, a good partner. And they've gotten a lot done together in the five months that they've been together. But um, he, it almost make, he almost makes it seem like, she gained the weight in the five months they've been together. No, no or... he, I, 
from what I read, it's like she's been overweight from the beginning, but he said it never bothered him because she still works out. So oh. she just might be the type of person that maybe has a harder time losing weight or, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter how much you work out. If you don't watch like your calorie intake and you don't know like your metabolic rate and all that shit, you could be fucking running all day every day, but you're not going to lose weight. And some people wear their weight differently, yeah. right? There's some people that wear their weight pretty well. You're like, damn, I didn't know that you were whatever. And then other people, you're just like, dang, you know, he's like, I'm trying everything. So it's a very tough situation. It seems like to me, he's just genetically turned off. Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, um, he, he, he's in love with her with his mind, but maybe his, his, his body, um, it like maybe his, his goes back to like the primal days, maybe his genetics are just like, no, this isn't, this isn't something we want to do, you know? Um, which is sad. I don't even know how you overcome that because I've always thought that, you know, sex is a, a huge, a huge proponent in in a in a relationship for as far as it to like stay together and and that intimacy and that emotional connection is so serious and and eventually you know if he's already noticing it now eventually he's it's it might get to the point where he just might not get hard at all and then all of a sudden now it's going to start fucking with her and her self-confidence and her self-worth you know so it's a very sticky situation and it's not like he he doesn't want to he doesn't want to tell her, but at the same time, he kind of does and to let her know, you know, how he's feeling, which I feel like he should. But, man, it's just a very, very sketchy situation. I just don't know how he would go about it. The only thing I would say if he was my buddy, I would be like, I think that you should have a conversation with her. But, like, I don't go at it like I want you to lose weight so I can stay sexually attracted to you. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. It's really tough because... No matter what you say, it's going to hurt her, you know, and and obviously he is he's already hurt by feeling it and knowing what it will do to her. So I know that he doesn't want to have the conversation with her, too. So I don't know how he can fix it within himself, even though I know that's what he wants to do. I know, like in the perfect world, he would find some remedy and just do that. And then she would never even know that he ever felt this way. Right. Well, I think. You know, physical attraction is just one of those things that you can't, like, necessarily control it. I feel you like can't. biologically, yeah. like, you're just kind of, you like what you like. Like, yeah. I knew I was attracted to men since before I even knew I was, like, Like, you know, knew what sex was and yeah. all that. I was, too. I, yeah. I remember being, like, five and six and seeing some of my mom's friends and being, like, damn, she's pretty. And I've always been attracted to Latino men. Like, it's just my thing. Hey. Nobody told me to do that. It's just kind of how I'm wired no your last name torres but i know my you know i know cousins who will not date latinos who ah. are tra attracted to white guys or yeah. asian guys or black guys or whatever gingers so i think <laughs> <laughs> i think honestly you know part of that is environmental let's say you grow up in an area that's like super homogenous with one type of like culture yeah if you that's all you're exposed to you're probably only going to be attracted to that versus True. like if you grow up somewhere more diverse where you you know see people of all different colors races sizes all that shit and if you're open-minded too yeah you know? but i also do think that men and women are attracted to different things so i think that men are way more wired to like prioritize physical attraction yeah whereas women i think are more emotional in the way that they connect with people sure like I think women prioritize things like personality. Yeah. You know, humor. Um, yeah. Like, do you make me laugh? Um, I Confidence. Think, yes. That kind of more existential stuff. The yep. things that you need to actually know somebody to know what their personality is. Uh -huh. And I have some, um, some data here uh -oh. from a study that says for young adults, 18 to 25, women ranked personality factors as much more important than did men so okay. women care more about personality sure women ranked resource factors as somewhat more important than men did so this what, is like, like access to money status it. all those things okay and then men ranked aesthetic factors as much more important than right. women so the physicality right so there is data to support the fact that men are more attracted to physical characteristics versus women being attracted to more uh personality and also like resource well that's what can you get me? that's all that's all genetic primal mm -hmm. ancestry that's all of our like genetic makeup and our molecules and stuff and our hormones telling us you know what we like you know they have those those studies about you know why men are attracted to women with with big breasts and and, and big 
um, a, you know, a thick ass and stuff like that. And then the whole thing about uh, why women wear heels, you know, uh, to work and stuff like that. So when a woman puts on heels, obviously it gives her the illusion of being taller, but because she's walking on the balls of her, her feet, on the toes of her feet, um, now her calves are uh, like subtly flexed. Yeah. So now she has more shape and definition to her legs. Out. The booty pops out, all of that. So that's just a very small example of the little tricks that nature has, has put into us to, to make sure that we, we select the right one to, to breed with, you know, where we want, you know, as a man, we want a woman who's voluptuous, has, has, has big breasts. So we know that she can feed my children, you know, and she's a little bit thicker. So I know she'll make it through the winter. And then for the men, uh, from the woman's perspective to the men, you want a man who's going to be, you know, a little bit emotional to be able to be there for you, uh, you know, care for you, obviously be, you know, a little bit confident and be able to be a go getter that goes back to the whole, you know, the, the monetary thing and stuff like that. The resources, you know, the the big bad dude is the guy who who wins, you know, like that's yeah. just how it goes. If this guy's got food, water and shelter. He's, he's going to do it a lot better than the guy who's out here trying to figure it out, right? Yeah. So, no, it's true. That's crazy. It's crazy. And at the end of the day, I think he's going to have to keep it real with himself. Yeah. And, like, don't drag this shit on if it's not something that you really think you can overcome. How do you think he should go about the conversation with her? Do you think it, it should? Do you think it should be a conversation that he has with her? Or do you think he should try to self-remedy before he has a conversation with her? If it's about her losing weight. That's a very fucking touchy subject. And she's already working out, which is the sad she thing. She is working out. She's um, already like, she already gives a fuck. So I'm sure like for her to hear that he's still like not all the way in it because of that would really fuck her up. Yeah. I think if he's going to even bring it up, he needs to bring it up in a way that's like not making it seem like she's doing anything on purpose. Right. Because, you know, sometimes people just let themselves go and then you try sure. to talk about it and it's like, no, fuck you. I don't want to hear about this. But I think he needs to approach it like. There's something that is affecting our chemistry. Oh, God. Versus you're overweight and I'm not attracted to you. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if it's affecting us, it feels like I want to be part of the solution mm -hmm, versus mm -hmm. like you're fat. Figure it out. Right. I don't like this. I actually have a prime example of this. It's very quick. But my, my really good buddy, Rich, he was in a relationship with, uh, with this nice lady uh, for a while. And one day we were... We were hanging out and he's like, uh, we, we just got into the, we just got into like the sex topic, like with our girls, you know, like how it is, how often we do it, you know, just guy talk, I guess. And he was like, man, like recently he's like, I, I've been, he's like, I only want to have sex in the shower. And I'm like, you know, what's going on or whatever. He's like, man, she just has this, like, she just has this odor. I don't know what to do. You're like, I, I don't know how to like tell her or whatever. And I'm like, well, you know, there's like, you know, there's feminine wash and all that stuff. And he didn't really know much about it or whatever. So anyways, long story short. I'm telling him because he was telling me it got to the point where she would like, you know, try to come on to him in the mornings or something like that. And he was getting to the point where he was kind of turning her down and that was starting to cause arguments and stuff. Right. Of course. So I convinced him to have a conversation with her about it and just let her know that. But put it put it to her in a way like, hey, I. I'm, I, I, I want to like do everything at all times and stuff like that, but there's just something going on. And I said, also, people get um, they get turned off and numb to their own smells and stuff you know and if this is something she's always dealt with which is what he said um then maybe she doesn't even really know or maybe she's okay with it or whatever so anyways they end up having a conversation about it long story short she ends up doing the feminine wash and stuff i mean she was a little off put at first but i guess she was like i have had this thing going on i mean Oh, so she, maybe he wasn't the first one to bring it up. Yeah, well, she was just like she did. She didn't know about it, but she didn't know that it was bothering him, right? Because he was never vocal about it. I guess he just powered through it. But <laughs> it's just Yikes. like one of those things. But yeah. anyways, it, they it did really well for them, you know. And all of a sudden, she was taking care of it, and she was trying to figure out, you know, things that she should stay away from or whatever that makes it worse or whatever. Because I guess everybody's body's different, and yeah. I know that with women, the whole machine is, is a lot going on you know it, so. your hormones like time of the month all of that stuff yeah so that was like a thing that it could have went left very quick i mean they're not together to this day but that's for other that's reasons. for other reasons <laughs> yeah that's for other reasons <laughs> but you know that was very brave of him to bring that up because that is not a fucking easy conversation to have when you are literally critiquing somebody's body the way that it looks or the way that it smells or you know that's like 
really fucking. That's a tough situation. God. I would I mean, almost want to have the breakup conversation before I would want to do that. Yeah. You know, how would you, how would you, what would be your perception if you were in, if you were his girl, you know, and, mm. and, and he just is like, Hey, I, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt or I'm not doing this. I don't know how to say this. But I don't what? know what. Like, well, you know how sensitive I am, so what? I'd probably start fucking crying. Would you? Like, oh oh no. my god, I'd be a hot ass mess. I'd be like I'm a fat fucking pig. Oh, <laughs> I'd be like spiraling and want. shit. I'd be spiraling. Oh. But I think it does require like some radical like accountability on my part if I really want to like hear him out. Would you respect would you respect him for being for being able to come to you and talk to you about it? Yeah, I think it would honestly depend on approach. I don't think I would take it well. You not gonna it. lie. Yeah, it's a but tough But I thing. also do think that the way that you approach it is so important. Like, right. If it's like, babe, I want you to be around for a long time. I'm worried about your health. Oh, I want to get you you know, like I want us to do this together because I love you and I want to be with you forever. Yeah. Like that comes from a really different place than like I'm not attracted to you anymore because you're overweight, you know? Yeah. And it has to be like, we got to, I want us to do this for us because it's going to benefit both of us. Yeah. And it's crazy too, because he said that he knows that she's, she's a good girl and and they're in love and and he knows that that's what's most important and everything. So he's got a, a, he's got the right, the right idea. He, he's, it sounds like he's overall frustrated at the fact that his love for her is not outweighing her physical appearance in the bedroom. I think that that's what was kind of going on in the beginning. And then now that, you know, you kind of get used to each other and you get used to the whole situation and everything. And I think certain things start to come to light that you were able to turn off or, you know, not see. It's the honeymoon phase is over. Yeah. And so it's like, and and it sounds like he's frustrated because he he enjoys his time with her and he knows that it's a good thing. But I I guess it's just, unfortunately, my good sir, when that starts to happen, especially for a man, there's not much that we can do to fake it, right? I mean, as a woman, you can fake an orgasm, but it's really hard for a man to just fake it. If he's not into it and stuff like that, I mean, his dick's just not going to work. Yeah. You know, I mean, got to crank that guy up on some Viagra or something. You know, the thing that I think... I have to be emotionally invested as almost as much as I'm physically invested to be able to like have sex and enjoy myself and really have a good time with it. I need to be tied in on all aspects. I can't just be walking around with my dick in my hand looking yeah. for a hole. You know what I think might be happening too? I feel like the confidence that you come with as a person has a lot to do with sexual attraction too, right? Because you could be a bigger person, but if you're like hella fucking confident and like that you rock shit in the bedroom yeah. and you own your shit, like, yeah. I think you can definitely overcome like not having a perfect body. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I am in no way like I agree. The s- most fittest chick in the world. <laughs> and I've been heavier and I was hella like un- insecure. And sure. I'm like, I don't want to be naked. Like turn the lights off. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And when I started prioritizing like myself and like losing weight, not for anybody else, but for me just to feel better. Yeah. Like that shit has boosted my confidence to the point where I'm like, I can't nobody tell me shit. I know I'm a bad bitch. You know That's what I mean? It. And I think maybe she's not coming with that energy. And well, you know, when when you and I, since you and I have been together, you know, both of our confidences have improved because of how we make each other feel. And I think that maybe, maybe with him, if he complimented her more, and maybe if he got more into like some of the things that she. Like look at her, the things that are are attractive. Yeah, I think because he because he did do that as far as like the emotional side and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just think that like maybe if he did that, maybe it would be better. But I don't know. Long, I no matter what, I do think that unfortunately there has to have a be a conversation because now that the seed is planted, yeah, it's it's like a tumor. It's like cancer. It's, it's just going to keep going. Head. It's going to be and, it, and it's going to. His self confidence is going to go down because he doesn't want to go soft while he's being intimate with his girl. Yeah, it's because like that's going to cause a, a whole fuck. problem. And now he's going into sex. He doesn't even want to have sex because he doesn't want it to work. Not he doesn't want it to not work, which mm. is a whole cycle. Yeah. And then so he's just avoiding sex in general. And then when he does, he's over here trying to 
think about something or, you know, he's just trying to stay, stay alive. And, and, uh, and that, that whole thing is toxic and there, and I'm not going to lie. That shit does not last. Mm-mm. That's how you end up sleeping in separate bedrooms and all that extra stuff. Yeah. And it's way too early for that. My friend, you guys it's are five months less than in. a year in bro. Yeah. You're good. You guys have plenty of like room for improvement. This is not like, Oh, your dick doesn't work. You need to break up. You know yeah. what I mean? There's more to it than that. I feel like you could do a lot more, especially if you know that she's a good girl. Yeah, the chemistry is important, but the character is also important, you know, and I just don't know. Once once the, the chemistry fades, yeah. like, ugh, that shit's kind of hard. Yeah, and you're right about the confidence thing, too, man. I, I've seen some... I've seen some big people, both men and women, and I'm like, man, like that. They that, got the they, juice. I really, really, <laughs> I really respect that, you know. And and it doesn't mean that I'm like sexually attracted to them, but they do have a certain bit of sexuality to them, you know. There's a little bit of sexiness to them, you know. A big girl wearing a two piece bathing suit is like, okay, like you got that. Mm-hmm. You do your thing. I, I fuck with the whole all of that. I'm not quite on board with the whole Lizzo thing, but. Just well, because of how she is. Yeah, she's very <laughs> toxic, right? So, um, yeah, damn. So, I guess to wrap it all up, I would ask, um, do you think everybody is worthy of love? Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. Like, love is one of those universal pursuits that I think it's, like, essential to the full human experience. You right. know, I don't think you can say that you lived a full life unless you experienced love. Like falling in love. Yeah. Like, I think that's just... That's just part of one of the reasons that we are wired the way that we are for connection. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can experience love in different forms, whether that's family or children or whatever. But I do think that there's something about romantic love that teaches us lessons that we don't learn in any other realm of life. Hell yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I agree 110%. And anybody, um, anybody out there that's listening that, you know, might be going through a hard time or maybe have never experienced love, um, you know, maybe... It's just been harder for you to attain. Um, you feel like maybe it's something that's like kind of avoiding you or, or whatever. Um, maybe you've gone through some heartbreak and you just are kind of turned off to love. Maybe you feel like love is, is not all it's cracked up to be. Um, it's, it's almost, it's almost like a religion or something, right? I mean, you are, you are, everybody's worth. They're definitely worth, um, worthy of feeling love. And, and, and that experience is, is one of, it's just one of those ones that really makes you a human. That's the one yeah. thing that we have besides creativity and free will. We are able to love, you know, I know, I know that there's some species of animals that have one mate and stuff like that. I'm sure they have their own love, but the way that we can fall in love and, and, and articulate it and, and, and talk about it and stuff and show it is, is what makes us special. So everybody's worthy of love, no matter what, no matter what you've been through. Um, I would like to say no matter what you've done, but I, no, I, there, I, I think so. There's some people out there that don't, that don't deserve. They're probably in prison right now. But. Well, yeah, <laughs> then maybe they did. You at one deserve point. love from your bunk mate, my sir. Maybe they did at one point, but <laughs> yeah. they fucked it up. You know? Right. Right. So anyways, what a great episode, babe. I think that, uh, I think we're good. You know, I, I think that, I think this is working out, you know? Yeah, I think so too. And uh, I am honestly so grateful that I took a step out into the world again after, you know, being hurt and gave myself an opportunity to be loved again because yeah. it's been the best decision that I've ever made. Oh, look at you getting all sweet. Mm. Ooh, that, <laughs> you guys, I love this girl right here. You guys don't even understand. <laughs> she's uh, she's so mushy and gushy sometimes. It's, it's the best. Mm. She actually surprised me when I came home from work the other day. I won't get into the details. I think that maybe I think we're going to start having different segments where like, you know, there's like Janice's corner and then there's Ray's rants and we'll talk about our own personal stuff or whatever. But um, I think women need to hear about that because it's been a journey for you. And, yeah. and you know, for you to be, feel confident. And I mean, she put on a little show for me, guys. It was great. She's blushing. She's literally beat red. But she put on a little show. It was awesome. It made me. It made me feel wanted and feel desired, and, and in turn, obviously, I was wanting and desiring her too. And it was just a, it was just a beautiful, beautiful experience. I've never had something like that before, and I feel oh. like that's like something that you that we've unlocked, you know, with the the love that we have with each other. It's just yeah. the comfortability and um, when you can be yourself authentically in a relationship, and that person makes you super confident in your own skin and makes yeah. you feel unjudged and and safe. Like, that shit takes you to another level. 
Yeah, and everybody deserves to feel that. I think that if everybody was, um, you know, engaged in, in something like that, you know, I think honestly the world would be a better place, you know, without doing all the kumbaya stuff like that. I just think that if there was more genuine, pure love going around and there was people living their lives for each other and stuff like that, I think that, I think it, I think it goes down into everything. I think people would drive slower. I think people mm. would look around more. I think, you know, I think people would value their life more if they, you know, if more people were in love. Yeah. I, I honestly do believe that. The world I'm about to be a place. cult leader, guys. <laughs> I promise you, I'm about to be a cult leader. I'm close. Oh God. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Listen, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode. Catch us next week. We've got another steamy topic that we'll talk about. Ooh. Hopefully we have some more updates on, you know, anything that's going on in, in the love sector of the world. Yeah. And um, hit us in the DMs. Yep. Go Make hit sure us you're on, following us on Instagram. You take it away, girl. Corazon Chronicles Pod on Instagram. We are at Corazon Pod on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck Elon Musk is calling this platform nowadays. Oh, God. Um, and you can always find us on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Please make sure to leave a review. Leave us a rating. Share us with your friends and family. Share us with anybody that you think would be getting some value out of the conversations that are happening here. We love to see your comments. And head on over to BetterHelp too, because they are actually a uh, a little a little partner for for the show. Uh, I know that I threw the blue chew thing in there, but I'm working on that. But check out BetterHelp. You know, we do have a little promo code. I think it's Cortison. Yep. Okay. Go to betterhelp.com slash corazon to get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. You can do couples counseling, individual counseling, family counseling, whatever you need to do to get your relationships in the right place. Yeah, and work on your, your, your mental health because that's that's number one. So thank you guys so much. Shout out to you guys. Hit like, subscribe. I love you. And Bye. we will see you next week. Peace. Bye.